I'm Richard Lloyd-Jones, and this is Thinking with Somebody Else's Head. In the light of the Paris attacks in November of 2015, it's difficult to know the best thing to do. The French government, seemingly wanting to show off those decisive decision-making muscles so vaunted in our no-nonsense, zero-tolerance, let's-show-them-who's-boss business model of a society, wasted no time declaring war. Most of our Western world commiserated concernedly and gave their approval. Donald Trump said the French need more guns. It's oh so easy to react in kind in this world, far too simple to hit back when we've been violated, to see red and demand hard justice. That response we know well. From Travis Bickles, you talking to me, to Dirty Harry's go ahead make my day snarl, the world's full of these modern archetypes, guys who don't back down, men and women who make sure they get even. But is this the best response if we want to resolve this? Will this brutality to match brutality move us forward? Seems we need another response. Towards a universal mentality, today, on Thinking with Somebody Else's Head. Our program for any tuning in for the first time, and with the Kepi motor literally exploding all over, thanks to the most energy-efficient motor and best innovative technology awards in Hong Kong recently, that will be many people. Our program originates from Sao Paulo, Brazil, the home of Norberto Kepi's remarkable Science of Analytical Trilogy, which our show is totally based on. We publish individual shows on podcasts downloadable through iTunes on your favorite podcatcher, Thinking with Somebody Else's Head, the program name. We also stream programs through our very own Stop Radio Network, again available through iTunes News Talk radio stations, and streaming to your smartphone or tablet through the free TuneIn app. Well, I don't want to appear too Pollyanna-ish here in my questioning of the French government response to the terrorism attacks recently in Paris. That is a very serious situation, of course, and I completely understand the gut-level response of most of us, I guess, to return fire in kind, an eye for an eye and all that. Perfectly understandable, that response. Many of us celebrate openly or even more secretly when heinous criminals get theirs at the hands of the movie hero. But I'm not sure we feel good about ourselves afterwards. Norberto Kepi explains this phenomenon in his formidable work of psychosociopathology. He clarifies that the essence of life and subsequently of the human being is goodness, truth, and beauty Everything that exists is, in itself, in its essential nature, good, true, and beautiful, in its original state, let's say. So in this view, anything evil or ugly or dishonest is the corruption or even destruction of that original essence. No river is born polluted, after all, but deteriorates to that when we interfere. We feel right when everything in our bodies is working normally. Any physical breakdown feels wrong. Health is the balanced natural state, a mixture of health and sickness, and we don't feel 100%. Kepi's science, then, requires a metaphysical disinversion. We are not evolving from the primal ooze, modifying from protoplasm to amoeba to fish to monkeys to cavemen. Instead, we are corrupting the beautiful essence of things and distorting our natures to more savage manifestations. So an appeal to more reasoned responses to terrorism emerges from this view of life and creation. The higher ground that Dr. King walked when he urged his followers not to lose faith in their white brothers in the dark days after a vicious bomber killed four little girls in a church in Birmingham, the high moral imperative that drove Gandhi in exhorting his followers to move beyond hate. Let's not condemn our white rulers for weaknesses we all have, he said. The high territory of Jesus, suggesting those without sin throw the first stone. This is the land Norberto Kepi inhabits, the land of showing the mistakes, of conscientizing the distortions, 
to our essential nature that the human being and our inverted society are conducting at the moment. It's the universal mentality that is the subject of our program today. And we're back with Dr. Claudia Bernhard Pacheco in just a moment when Thinking with Somebody Else's Head returns on the Stop Radio Network. You're listening to the Stop Radio Network, originating from the International Society of Analytical Trilogy in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Our programs are also affiliated with the Stop the Destruction of the World Association, bringing consciousness of the root causes of human problems since 1992. In 2004, in a small countryside village in Brazil, the Stop the Destruction of the World Association initiated a remarkable project. Cambuquira is the place we choose to organize our living experiences in analytical trilogy. The human being and society are dependent on one another. It does no good to try to correct the individual while allowing the social sphere to remain the same. Like a new model of social, economic, artistic, educational, spiritual living. Our Kampukira project is a model of a society that nurtures the human spirit. It's a small place. It's not far from Sao Paulo. We travel through very beautiful mountains. And there we have our hotel, the largest hotel in this town. Welcome to the Grand Trilogy Hotel. And when they go there, they have natural organic food, natural organic milk, natural organic cheese and products, very good meat, but we also have possibilities for the vegetarians. And there we have our hotel where we apply the concepts of this new world, this new society, a better life to live. Classes, businesses, social projects, a better society brought to life. We have conference rooms, we have a theater, we have musical presentations, we have artists from Brazil and from all over the world coming there. Analytical Trilogy has proposals to transform all areas of human activity, leading to the society of the future. There we will have people immersed, participating in living in a society where the pathology of power is controlled. Because the pathology of power is more than ever impeding people to survive. Sociotherapy, using the world's most advanced science. The solutions will never come from the powerful. They are coming from the people, from those who are more capable, like artists, like scientists, like educators. So that's what we are doing here, creating mechanisms to live a happier life. To find out more about Analytical Trilogy and our Campbell Kidder Social Project, go to our website at www.stop.org.br. I'm Richard Lloyd-Jones, and welcome to the Stop Radio Network. We broadcast from the International Society of Analytical Trilogy in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And our programs, Thinking with Somebody Else's Head and Healing Through Consciousness, offer the most relevant conversations around about the state of our world and what we can do to make it better. Thanks for tuning in. You're listening to the most relevant conversations on the planet about how to stop destroying ourselves and the world. This is the Stop Radio Network. The program is Thinking with Somebody Else's Head, streaming on the Stop Radio Network, available through iTunes radio stations or directly to your smartphone or tablet through the free TuneIn app. Just install, search for Stop Radio Network and favorite us, and we're streaming to you anytime you like. You know, with all the chaos in the world today, the the fragmentation of culture against culture, religion against religion, and all the rest of that craziness and inhumanity, I kind of feel our program today will breathe some sanity into the proceedings because really it's spirituality we must turn to if we're to truly understand our situation and particularly what's gone so wrong. And Dr. Claudia Bernhard Pacheco is really the perfect person to guide us on this journey. Claudia? Hello, Richard. <laughs> Hello, Claudia. Did I talk too <laughs> Hello, much? Hello, listeners, the <laughs> uh, radio listeners. Yes. Um, I was wondering why you were talking, and I was remembering some of the writings of Malachi Martin again, because I consider Malachi Martin as a very respectful theologian of the 21st well, he was the 20th century. But 20th his, century, yeah, yeah, but he will probably be, be recognized yeah. 
in the 21st century. Malachi Martin, the Irish priest who worked with three popes at least, wrote a number of books too about religious themes. Yeah, Yeah. and his writings about the Vatican and the Church uh, are very much uh, like um, alike Dr. Kepi's view of what happened to Christianity and to Catholic Church, and and but Kepi expands his view in a more scientific uh, approach. And also he speaks about all organized religions and not only Catholic Church. But they coincide when they say that since the early uh, Christian organized church, meaning since Constantino, the Rome emperor, and the Roman emperor, and Sylvester, the first pope that was engaged in this uh, so-called political, social, economic, structured church, Catholic Church, or the Church of Rome, because Sylvester was the first pope that was not um, seen as an underground religious person or leader, because so far religion was persecuted. Christianity was persecuted by the Roman Empire. Forgive my ignorance, but what years are we talking now, Claudia? We are speaking about the 4th century. 4th century, so fourth century. The, the, uh, 300. And such. St. So, Augustine? Uh, St. Augustine was bef- after that. After that. Okay. After that. Okay. So until uh, this time when Constantine, the emperor, was he had a very strong experience himself, spiritual experience, because he was in a, in a battle, in a big war. He was engaged in many wars because the Roman Empire was very powerful. The Roman Empire was almost all over the world, has its laws, its social, political, and economic organization all over Europe, Africa, and they were almost the owners of the world and the planet at the time. And Roman Empire were, had its own gods. They were pa- pagan gods. There were pagan gods. and Dualistic view too, right? Yeah. So they, they were very much developed in terms of philosophy. They had already uh, the Stoic thinkers. They had all this Greek civilization behind them. So they were philosophically much better developed even than the Christians that had a, a more religious theological approach and not philosophical. But uh, Constantine had a very, very strong experience. And he saw during a battle, during the night, one one night, he saw in in the sky a cross. And then he heard a voice saying, uh, accept the cross and through the cross, with the cross, you will be uh, a winner. You will conquer the enemy. Be victorious. You will be victorious. And so he was so much impressed by that. And he that adopted would impress, that this, would impress you. <laughs> I mean, imagine you're there in the middle of a battle or at night of a battle, and you see this cross in the sky. And this and happened also with Paul the apostle when he was incredible. struck by uh, a lightning of energy of God, and and Jesus said, "Why do you persecute me?" Yeah. And then after that, he started to be uh, uh, an apostle, and and he gave his life, dedicated his life to spread the message. So this experience happens sometimes with chosen people. And Constantine, um, he adopted the the, the cross and uh, even physically adopted the cross as a symbol for his army. And he won the battle. So he came back to Rome totally shaken and impressed, looked for the Pope at the time, it was not Sylvester, was a Pope before Sylvester. And he said, I'm humbling myself and I want to become a Christian. I want to be baptized, but I'm a sinner. So, and he said, this is funny because he said, 
I will have to wait until the end of my life because if I repent now and if I am um, baptized, I know I will sin again. Yeah. I will not. I, I will not be perfect. We, I will we, not be able to to promise that. We have I will a bit not, of a problem here. Yes, yeah, I will not be able to promise that I will not sin again. So I have to uh, um, take a serious behavior, uh, like a decision, and but only be baptized in the end of my life. So I'll be more in accordance to my purpose. And this is something that I want you to write down. This idea that to be with God, one must not sin. Okay. So please write yeah. down, and I want to be back to this okay. area. Good. <laughs> Got it. So, um, so that's what happened. And he said, from now on, you will have the whole empire, the roads, uh, the army, uh, the mayors, the governors, uh, every, every single person, citizen, in, in being Roman or, or under the power of Rome, will have to obey Christianity as this, the state religion. And the Pope will be almost above the emperor and will be ruling what will happen in, in the Roman Empire and Roman civilization. So imagine, Jones, for a group of Christians that were underground being all uh, martyred because of their beliefs uh, and they could not own anything, they could not have any property, they they had to be anonymous in society. So this was a shift, yeah, this is enormous huge, shift, enormous. huge shift. Because I've been to the catacombs in Rome where they lived there yeah. in, the, in these days before Constantine, and boy, that was not. They a very were arrested, nice... tortured, assassinated, yeah, tough life, Ooh. and buried in under horrible conditions, anonymous yeah, uh, graves, graves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, after a time, the the Pope who was in charge when Constantine had his conversion died peacefully. We had a. A serious ceremony of burial. For the first time, a pope was dig- buried with honors from the state, and then Sylvester was appointed after him. So Sylvester was the first real, real pope that was chosen and picked up by a, a church that was um, a legal, uh, official religion of the state. Since then, uh, the power of Christianity only grew more and more to a point where uh, Rome was almost the owner of the world in terms of power. Yeah. They were more powerful than emperors, than kings. Emperors and kings had to bow, bow themselves in front of the Pope and obey the Pope. So we cannot say that Christianity was not able to make it to bring the kingdom of Jesus, the divine kingdom, to the planet because they had no power to do that, because they had all the power and all the conditions to do that. So what happened? (laughs) So what happened? And this is the crucial point. And here comes Cappy with his understanding about what happened. Um, When Cappy speaks about power, political and social power, he's speaking also about exoteric ideas that services, ceremonies, official practices, external rights, formalities laws, uh, this would be uh, just what was needed, sacraments, to go to the church, attend the sacraments, being uh, like up to date with the, the, the rules and the, the commandments of the church. But no one ever really understood what Jesus meant. So they had this huge, powerful Christian institution that was then gradually rotten from from within, as even Malachi Martin said, that the church was rotten from 
within. From a long time ago. From a long time ago, centuries. So when Sylvester started his papacy, he th- this this they were hoping to be able to finally prepare humanity for the second coming of Jesus. But as the second coming of Jesus was something that was not well understood when it would happen, and they had to wait and wait, and that and they saw this as a physical manifestation of of Jesus and not a spiritual manifestation of Jesus. So they had to organize themselves in a way that uh, made them pact, politically speaking, with all the powerful people, political, economic, and social powerful people in the planet. So since then, Vatican became a state, even later, a real true state. So they have all their political, temporal, powerful interests that have nothing to do with Jesus' teachings and on the opposite. Let's let's take a break. It's like the difference between the, the paperwork, maybe part of the bureaucracy, and what it actually means to be Christian. So we're back with more when Thinking with Somebody Else's Head returns in just a moment on the Stop Radio Network. You're listening to the most relevant conversations on the planet about how to stop destroying ourselves and the world. This is the Stop Radio Network. I remember the book Glorification that Dr. Kepi wrote. I was with him many of the nights or days where he got those inspirations from God, and it was a necessity for him to write what he received. So the book was totally written under inspiration. But it's not only a theological book, it's mostly a scientific book, very therapeutic book, very beautiful, by the way. And he used to wake up during the night, two, three in the morning, and he said, let's go to the top of the mountain. And we were watching the sky in this dark night with no interference, so you could transcend the sky and see heaven through it. Oh my God, you could adapt the writings that he did with the music of Beethoven, and this would be a trilogy of his writings and the music. It would be heaven. Norberto Kepi's Glorification, available in the bookstore at stop.org.br. I'm Richard Lloyd-Jones, host of Thinking with Somebody Else's Head here on the Stop Radio Network. You know, I receive emails all the time from people who resonate with our shows and the science behind them, called the Science of Analytical Trilogy. People like Trilogy's perspective on economics and health and energy, how Trilogy's psychological perspective goes to the root causes of human problems. But sometimes people ask me, but what can I do about all this? How can I help to contribute to the greater consciousness on the planet? I tell them the same thing. Our trilogical books and TV shows are a rich source of knowledge that you need if you want to be an effective change agent today. Analytical Trilogy books are available on our site at stop.org.br. There's dozens of our Stop TV programs there, too. So you can read, watch, pass the info on to your networks, and let's see if together we can restore human society to its correct state. Stop.org.br. That's your site for the science of the 21st century. You're listening to Thinking with Somebody Else's Head on the Stop Radio Network. We are back continuing our discussion about really the history of Christianity and what Norberto Kepi's work of Analytical Trilogy means when it talks about spirituality, trying to separate those two. So we've come to the place, Claudia, in your very expansive discussions about the the corruption within. And this started way, 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 way back, almost at the beginning of the of the of the time of Christianity. And uh, you said just before the break that they didn't have an idea of what Jesus was talking about, actually. <laughs> they had this uh, idea of, of sacraments and confession and these kinds of religious ceremonies. But what Jesus was talking about was not that so much, was it? I mean, obviously, those those things have their value, have their place, but he was talking about something much more uh, practical, maybe, day-to-day. So, as I was saying, uh, the interests of uh, the religious leaders uh, had then a commitment with diplomacy, what the so-called diplomacy, they became more diplomatic than truthful, honest, 
they started to see their own economic and social interests and their pacts and their partnerships and and they even promoted war sometimes they had their armies to defend their interests and they were always uh, involved in 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 situations that they had to be to make choices that would inflict something against the teaching of Jesus and they had to defend the institution of the church and i don't mean that there were not real real saints inside the church we had many saints really honest people and it was because of those saints that the church was able to preserve for centuries a lot of power centuries and centuries a lot of power and respect because of those that were inside the institution but they were honest and saint and many times the real saints were even persecuted by the institutional church we had the, the very always fresh example of Jeanne d'Arc. Oh, Joan of Arc, yeah. So she was put in uh, to burn in fire. Yeah. And for political reasons, by the way. For political reasons. Yeah, and the to Cardinal do with her Cochon faith. was behind her persecution. And the British, the English wanted and to get the British. Back, yeah, get control of England, yeah. Of so France. So you see this and you see many many uh, cases of geniuses and scientists and artists that were persecuted by the church san francisco de assis uh, saint francis uh, he was thrown out of the vatican by the pope as being uh, like um, um low level no, a no. bum <laughs> a low level. Yeah, yeah low get this level bum, bum out. Of, get this bum out of the valley. Yes, and that's what happened <laughs> in the first place. And then he was so much loved by people that the Pope had to receive him later. Uh-huh. Uh, so we see this many times. We see, for instance, the apparitions of the Holy Mother being covered up sometimes by the Church. So it is something that we could not see and call this Christianity. So what we see is that Christianity, and we use this word Christianity because they call themselves Christians, but we can say that Christians really didn't understand, at least institutional religion, did not understand truly the message of Jesus. And let's understand why. Jesus always spoke in esoteric terms, ezo inside, yeah, because right. exo is uh, outside. The system, the, the structure. So, ezo inside, uh, Jesus always spoke, and he spoke also about a kind of baptism. To be pe- baptized in spirit and not only in water, because so far people were baptized by water, using water. And Jesus brought the baptism of the Spirit. And those who would not be born again in Spirit, they would not really be baptized. So always Jesus was speaking about inner life, inner terms, saying that the true adorers of the Father, those who the Father would love the most, would be those who would not follow temples, but would be the followers in uh, truth and in spirit. So he had always been an extremely initiated person in terms of being uh, giving value to the inner life of the person. And we had not seen so far, Richard, any science, any school of psychology, any religion that would take or give so much importance to the inner life of the individual as Cappy does. And how that inner life manifests in our external actions, right? Yes. This is the, so important, isn't yes, it? To, yes, yes. it has So you see, for instance, the many uh, clerics being, um, being victim of their own trap, having talked so much only about sex and sex and sex and sexual sins, and now having all these pedof- scandals of pedophilia. Yeah. So uh, we see that the approach 
that religious people give, not only Christians, Richard. I'm now speaking about Jews. I'm speaking about Muslims. I'm speaking about Buddhists, Hindus. They give an enormous importance to external things, miracles coming from outside, uh, contacts with gods and spiritual leaders from outside, um, religious practices uh, like ceremonials, um, even meditation. They do, uh, but not doing an inner examination of oneself, of this inner life. So being inner oriented is not easy. No. Because if we look inside, as Jesus taught, if we bring light to our inner lives, then we will see not only good and beautiful things inside of us, we will see all that Jesus said. Behind the hypocritical, the mask, the hypocritical behavior, we have a lot of ill intentions, as he quoted, dishonesty, lying, uh, slandering, envy, arrogance, hatred, injustice, egotism, narcissism, many, many, many sins in this area, spiritual Gluttony area. And greed and... Materialism. Yeah. So all this, but mostly the spiritual sins. Yes. The spiritual sins that are even more important and worse. Uh, that Kepi puts all together in, in a package that he calls inversion. So we appreciate and we take a lot of pr pleasure from these demons that we bring inside. So demons are inside of us and we are many times acting like demons. And this is something that is not easy to see and to admit. Th this has helped me a lot, though, Claudia, in Dr. Kepi's work to understand spirituality because, you know, if we see it as this kind of institutional thing, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's more difficult to reach, actually, because the real idea of, like, being good, of being honest, being ethical, this is, this is something very practical. And, of course, then we need to see how we deviate from that. This becomes a much more dynamic struggle to me somehow than this idea of, of what the church says we can do and can't do. It's more this idea then of how am I uh, dynamically expressing what it means to be a, a Christian-type person? What, what am I doing and how am I not doing that? It becomes a very therapeutic process, and uh, I find this very helpful somehow. And if you consider that all the world will have one day to be the followers of Jesus and his teachings. You will ne never be able to understand this through an institutional religion and people being baptized in one church. This seems to be impossible to happen. But if you have the true vision of Jesus and his teachings, which is an inner-oriented, spiritual-oriented vision, as Kepi puts in his science, it's absolutely possible because any person who is honest and has a common sense, we will agree with what the trilogical science does. And Kepi understands Jesus in a more deep, deep, deep way through science. So there is no, and, and there is this spirit of Jesus in his science. So when the world understands the spirit of Jesus through analytical trilogy, through the scientific approach, and understand that Jesus is the most sensible being ever in the universe, they will not uh, contradict um, his teachings because it's a common sense and all of them have this inside of themselves printed. Every human being has this understanding in their inner lives. Like you must, if you want to, if you want to, be happy here now. Love God above anything, which is goodness, beauty, and truth. Right. And do 
and do to your fellow man what you would like to yeah, be done to you. Uh, so it's a, su- such a simple yeah, rule so, that it's impossible for any person to contradict. Yeah, but it, it's so helpful, Claudia, because you've just made God, goodness, beauty, and truth, and not this figure in the sky. It's like uh, it's a, a way to honor in our own lives here now, being good, being beautiful, being true, giving value to that above all things. And, and the pure act, because God is pure act, and God is a being, energetic being. He has. He, he provides all the energy. He's modern. He's con, not only contemporary, but he's he's the owner of the past, the present, and the future. So this cosmic God and this co- cosmic Jesus Christ, it's a it's a, a person that when people understand, then we will see all peoples from all religions, all sources, converting to Christianity, but not the old-fashioned Christianity, the misunderstanding of Christianity and Christ. Yeah, see, this makes makes God and and Jesus relevant somehow, not something from a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, but a a relevant experience now. Has Dr. Kepi's definition of God in this way been acceptable to the the religious people? Yeah, sure, because it's, it's universal. It's universal. So, and it's all Christian. It's Jesus is speaking through science. <laughs> so it's really beautiful to understand. And many atheists, many Muslims, many, many Jews, as you know, we have all, of, all religions yeah. in our trilogical society. And people who are not religious in the formal sense, like myself. Because the true spirituality, the true Christianity is spirit. It's the inner life of the person. So going back to that subject, which I mentioned in yeah. the beginning. One must not the, sin to be with God. So the, the, the dilemma of Constantine. So this was something that was a mistake done by the religious, like the institutional religious people. They gave the idea that if you were, if you confessed, you would have to commit not to sin again. And honest people know they are imperfect. We have the original sin. We are upside down. We have this in our psychogenetics. We have this in our DNA. So we know we will not be able to avoid sin. And if we say that, we are being liars and hypocritical or crazy. Or crazy, dishonest and crazy. And lunatic. Because the arrogance of seeing oneself as perfect is a form of mental sickness. So an honest, a humble person seen by Jesus Christ in when he spoke about this as closer to him was that one who saw himself as a sinner. So the the message of trilogical science is one must see and admit our pathologies, our sins, in order to be able to humble ourselves and do as much as possible about that. And God knows we are unperfect. The problem maybe is that we don't want to see that we're not perfect, right? Norberto Kepi deals with that trio of envy, censorship, and projection in his book Origin of Illness, reasoning that to the extent we have resistance to seeing our problems, that's the degree of projection out onto the external world we will manifest. I don't have a problem, but uh, you sure do, is how that song goes. But it's exactly this unwillingness to become aware of our problems that causes damage to us and to our society because of this collective resistance. That's our program for this time. Thinking with somebody else's head is on the Stop Radio Network. I'm Richard Lloyd-Jones. Bye-bye for now. You're listening to the Stop Radio Network, originating from the International Society of Analytical Trilogy in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Our programs are also affiliated with the Stop the Destruction of the World Association, bringing consciousness of the root causes of human problems since 1992. Since the beginning of all civilizations, they had always manifested an enormous interest and knowledge about the spiritual life and spiritual beings. It's a world of ancient wisdom that modern science has eliminated. The arising philosophy of positivism preferred to base science on material happenings. So, only what you can see and touch and feel is real. Now, spirituality is being put back into science. Imagine what would happen if people start considering this as a real thing. Not only as a religious thing, but also a real scientific thing. 
Imagine what would happen. Norberto Kepi's Universe of the Spirits, a scientific analysis, available in the bookstore at stop.org.br. I'm Richard Lloyd-Jones, and welcome to the Stop Radio Network. We broadcast from the International Society of Analytical Trilogy in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And our programs, Thinking with Somebody Else's Head and Healing Through Consciousness, offer the most relevant conversations around about the state of our world and what we can do to make it better. Thanks for tuning in.